Ace Jeffreys is a singer, songwriter, music director, worship leader, and today he graces our set on Hello Nigeria. It's such a delight to have you. I have joy overflow that you're here. Joy overflow everywhere. Joy overflow. Nigeria, joy overflow. I know, right? <laughs> That's a, that was a really lovely and happy video. Where did you shoot that? Uh, we shot it in, uh, in Houston, in the United States, sometimes uh, in November. Okay, Joe Braze, mm. welcome to our Hello Nigeria set for the very first time. Yeah, first time. Now, we know that you were not always Joe Braze. You know, you were that Joe born in Edo State, the young boy who had dreams. So let's go back to that Joe that was a little <laughs> boy, and let's find out what was Joe like? What was growing up for you like? Um, growing up was very, very good. Um, not, of course, with a silver spoon. Uh, not even with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> some have, uh, some actually grew up with a golden spoon, silver spoon, and wooden spoon. Some of us didn't have a spoon at all. But it was a, uh, it was a life that was purposeful, a life that was um, built on, you know, tomorrow is going to be better than where we are today. And I've always been that kind of person. And yeah, um, I had my everything in Benin City until I moved to Lagos in 2001. I remember 18 years plus now. And uh, the story has been so different. Um, God has been very, very good. God has smiled on me. And uh, that's why my music is smiling on many people right now. I'm not just keeping it to myself, but, you know, sharing it everywhere. You're moving to Lagos. A lot of people talk about they're coming to Lagos and they tell you, oh, I fought with my family. My family told me not to go. I won't make it. Do you have similar story? Do you have any issues coming to Lagos as well? Uh, no, mine was, um, was divine. Not just being, uh, being divine. Um, I, I don't like to say this, but people will know now. I... I've been an orphan since 1998, so it was easy for me. No parents, you know, and uh, we just want to make sure things go as well for us. And we moved to Lagos. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now you've you've grown up into a man who is not just a man; you're a daddy. I would come into that daddy hey. part of you. But let's talk about your musical career. Mm -hmm. We know that you've all, your music, you know, is a, you're a gospel minister. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a point where you were tempted, you know, to switch and start doing secular music? Yeah, not at, all, not at all. I've never had that drive. I've never thought of it. I, I mean, I'm cool doing what I'm doing. I'm an errand boy. I've been sent by God to do what I'm doing. So I'm really cool. I've never had that thought at all. Not trying to throw shit on those who do it. I mean, we all have our various um, 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 purpose in life. Everyone is going to stand before God and, and give account of how you're able to use the gifts and talents that you were given. So, What are your thoughts cool. on collaboration with you know, other artists? So we find that other artists. sometimes um, there was a time Nikki Laoye did the collaboration with um, Shei Shei, and mm -hmm. there was a time Nikki Minaj did a collaboration with another gospel act. And Tasha you know, Cobb. Exactly, Tasha <laughs> Cobbs. And then the internet went crazy. People yeah. were saying, why would a gospel artist do a collaboration with a secular artist? So what are your thoughts on collaborating with someone, uh, an artist who isn't doing gospel music but maybe it's also a gospel song you're collaborating on yeah uh, i've i've thought about this several times um i you could see a joe praise do a collaboration with a non-christian singer and that could be in projects that uh, maybe um, civil in nature maybe there's um, um a song for nigeria or a song for africa a song for peace in the world and stuff like that i could do that but um a collaboration for a Christian song, I'll ask myself, why do I want to do it? It's all about purpose. Why do you want to do it? I mean, if you ask um, the likes of my beloved sister Nikki, she'll tell you why she did it. If you ask um, Tasha Cobb, she'll tell you why she did it. Your priest can't tell you why they did it. I can only tell you why I want to do what I want to do. I'll ask myself, what do I want to achieve with this project? Why do I want to do it? If bringing this person on board will help me to achieve this project, how about doing it alone? Won't I be able to achieve the same, pu same purpose? You know, so these are questions you need to ask and tell yourself the truth before hearing it. Do you ever feel like, you know, you experience pressure being a gospel artist because there are certain societal expectations. The moment you flag and you brand yourself as a Christian, there are certain expectations society places on you such that you get worried. So did you ever get worried, what if I sleep? What if I make a mistake? You know, what are they going to do to me? So do you feel that pressure that comes with brandishing your faith? I'm never afraid to make mistakes. I'm never afraid. That's, that's why when you see me, I'm very real. You can't find me and you say, this guy is fake. Mm -mm, I'm very real. Um, no pressure at all because I'm not in a hurry to, to, to impress anybody. No pressure. Um, I'm just doing what I'm doing. Um, I like what I'm doing. I find fulfillment in what I'm doing. Um, people get pressurized when they are trying to please certain persons. That's what brings the pressure. 
because now you're living a fake life. You're not being real to yourself. You're not being real to the you that people should enjoy. You know, God likes for us to be real because you can only pass across your, your beauty, the, your inner beauty when you're real. When you're fake, you cannot pass across your inner beauty. And your inner beauty is what, you know, beautifies the world. The way you can paint this room now may not be the way I like to paint my room. But if you paint your beautiful colors, I paint my own, he paints his own, and stuff like that, you know, make the world a better place. Interesting. You're never afraid of making mistakes. I never. think that's something powerful. But there are many people who are trapped by people bondage, you know. And that's why, that, that's why they don't make progress. You see, when you're afraid of making mistakes, you cannot step into the next level. You know, so it's my encouragement to you. Never Fantastic. be afraid. Never be afraid. Now, let's talk about, um, you know, you being a married man. How Ooh. would you say that <laughs> the dynamics of your career have been ever since you got married? You find that some people will tell you, oh, since I got married, you know, I have, I have to spend more time with the family, so I have less time for my career, or I have less time for music. Or some people will tell you, um, it's been, you know, it's been a fantastic addition, but I'd like to hear your own experience. Um, for Joe Praise, uh, everything was uh, planned out by God. That's why I took my time to make sure everything was okay, the way I wanted them to be. The way, you know, when, um, who's this guy? When Noah wanted to be the ark, right? God gave him the specifications. Exactly what I mean. Even uh, Aaron, you know, when he wanted to be, um, um, uh, sow the, the apron for him, the tailor had to be told, this is the land, get this kind of material, this is how you're going to do it. So for me, um, no pressure in that area as well. Of course, I spent it on my family. I have to travel when I have to travel. Ministry is very, very important. Family is also important. Family is ministry as well. So everything is just, you know, balanced and settled. Congratulations when... on being a brand new daddy. Thank you. Let's talk about the moment when your newborn baby was uh... born. How was it for you? Did you cry? I did. I, I, I wish I could show you the video, <laughs> the picture. I respect um, um, women even more because what I did was to make sure I'm there, to be in the very room, to see everything, you know, was going to go out. Um, I respect women, you know, so much, even more now. Seeing the pain they go through just to make us a happy father, a happy husband. You know, when I saw my wife going through, you know, that when she was traveling, I'm like, so after this now, a man will not raise up his hand and hit his wife. I'm like, it, it doesn't just gel. I'm, I, I, I am trying to believe that it happens. Of course, I've seen course it happen. Of course, it does happen. But I'm like, why would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to do that. So uh, women are just uh, um, an amazing set of people, and I salute every mother um, today. Thank you for giving us you know, beautiful kids that will not just um, help us to be, make, us, make us fathers, but also to make us, um, uh, give us the ability to replicate ourselves into a human being, our child. Now, it's interesting that you mentioned that after that, you know, it gave you a different perspective of women and helped you to respect women more. However, some men go into the labor room and never come out the same because they are traumatized and they're thinking to themselves, after this one, no, no. more. <laughs> Were no. you traumatized? Not traumatized. I just <laughs> felt that, that, passion, that compassion and passion for um, the gift of life. How can you explain it? That in a woman's body, in a womb, there is a living being there. How can you explain it? It gave me lots, you know, lots of, you know, pictures came to my mind, trying to understand the narrative and all that. But hey, God is great. Those who don't believe in God, you're joking. I'm telling you, you're joking. Let's yeah. look at, you know, your, your music now has touched several lives around the world. Your music is global. What would you say have been some of the highlights of your career so far? Mm. Um, to see the unimaginable happens in um, your daily when people listen to my music, because how much can you pay to heal someone who has been diagnosed of stage four cancer when doctors have given up? People don't believe in miracles, but I'm a child of God. I believe in miracles. I believe people have received miracles through our music. And that humbles me even the more when I see someone who says, my case has deferred all medical interventions and application, and I listen to your music, I receive my healing. That's, that's a grown-up adult. He or she couldn't be lying. You know? So for me, those are high points of my music career. It's not the glitz and the glamour. 
Sometimes I go for events and I tell people, if you don't know Jesus, it's time to know Jesus. And you see them come out in their hundreds. Those are high points for me. Nothing more. I feel emotional talking about this all the time. There is nothing more to me. It's not the money. The money will always come. The Bible says, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing, the cars, the houses, the everything, they will follow. So my heart points when I see people who can take care of themselves, get blessed and transform by my music. So you're all about impact, and impact is really one of the yeah, highest... The, my dear um, sister, life is all about impact. Yes. I mean, the, the, the young guy who you just interviewed a while ago, um, Kachi Benson. Benson. I mean, just watching, you know, the, 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 um, the videos, the pictures actually from his visit to Chibok, that's impact. Life is all about impact. If you're not impacting people, why are you, what, what kind of life are you living? Now let's talk about the low moments because I'm sure there might have been a few low moments you know, <laughs> where you yourself have been down and discouraged. I'm asking this because there's several young artists who are just starting their career and think to themselves, why have I not made it? Why, have, why has my music not gone global yet? Why am I not getting the kind of feedback that I want? Mm -hmm. Maybe it would be nice if you shared with us you know, one low moment or more and how you were able to handle them. Um, talking about low moments, my sister, you know, the truth is you always have low moments. In not low moments as to put you in a disadvantaged position because that is not a portion as God's children. You have them, yes, they come. But when they come to you, you're already fortified. You're positioned to overcome them because they are bred. It's just like you're in school. You have to write exams to go to the next level. When these low moments come, you are well equipped. You're well equipped to handle them. For instance, I've had times where... Um, I go for some events, and it's not really what I thought. You know, you just go there, you're thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, and you go there, is that the sound is not, I mean, it's not working the way it should work, because some, some things just go wrong. You don't, you just pick yourself and say, you know what, hey, tomorrow is going to be greater. For instance, you release a song, and you're thinking, oh, this song is going to be, ah, it's going to be everywhere, and the song didn't really meet up with the proposed you know, you know, whatever it is, you tell yourself, ah, I thought this was, but just calm down. Tell yourself, tomorrow is going to be better. If you have that mindset, trust me, there is no way you will not succeed. If you're always looking for, ah, let's blow, let's blow, let's blow, you have troubles. Because people want to blow. Even the younger, I mean, the younger guys, I always talk to them. You want to blow, blow, blow. Ask yourself, have I trained myself enough to get to a point where I'm able to, you know, um, be a blessing to people? Grow, don't blow. Hmm. Grow, don't blow. Yes. Now, you, I want to find out what fame has taught you. Lots of people want to get famous, but they're not ready for fame. But you are famous. What would you say is the one lesson that being famous has taught you? Being famous, actually, to be honest with you, without trying to be spiritual about this whole thing, has taught me to be real. Just, just be real. Just be who you are. Trust me, I can go anywhere today in the world without pressure can go anywhere. If you're famous, you shouldn't be famous and you go hide yourself. I don't think that is, that's why you see celebrities die of, uh, what do you call it? Depression. Depression. Because they want to go out. They want to drive themselves. They want to go do something, but they can't do it. So they're like, what kind of a life is this? You just hear that someone who is so famous committed suicide. Because they became famous and took up another form took up the fake life. They forgot to maintain their real life. So being famous has taught me, to be honest with you, to be real anytime, any day. Words of wisdom, final, final words of wisdom to any young boy, young girl, you know, who's looking forward to being at the stage of life where you are, you know, even surpassing someone who has a career in maybe particularly gospel music, what would you say to encourage them? Um, be service oriented. I'll explain what I mean by that. Be someone who's ready to serve. The troubles I have with young people today, with most, I'm, I'm a young person, but most of the young people I have around who want to blow is that they don't want to serve. You see, um, when you get to a point where you don't want to serve, trust me, 
you'll be missing out of so many things that you could have enjoyed. So I encourage you, be someone who want to serve. Just look for some way to serve. Even if you have that kind of mentality, when you become so famous, you will still maintain it because at every point in time you want to serve. Yes, I'm looking out for something I'm going to do. I've, I've never, I've never uh, honored the TV interview in a very long time. I'm so happy I'm able to be here today. And I'm so happy that yeah, you're here. Yeah, seriously. Like to have so you. you're looking out for a way to yourself. Just, just help somebody. Just serve. Just serve. In your service comes your lifting. Amazing. So that's our takeaway word for today. Mm -hmm. Um, you had a recent project you just did, you know, tell us about like your latest project. Oh yeah, oh sure. Um, we, I took a risk, <laughs> oh, it's not what I said, so I took a risk because those who know the Joe Prince, like, ah, Joe Prince likes to worship and stuff like that, I just said, ah, come on, man. I'm a young person. I have young people around. We must reach out to them. So I did the song Joe Overflow. You want to saw a while ago. Yeah. And it's gone viral. It's amazing the response I'm getting from that song. You know, when the song came out, I'm like, ah, so many people tried to resist it, but now, <laughs> you know, they can't resist it no more. It's everywhere. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much, your praise, for Appreciate coming on our Appreciate set, Appreciate for granting us the interview. Yeah. I send our love and our hugs and kisses to your wife and baby. Tell them we love them and we look forward to seeing them soon. Thank you How so can much. people follow up with you? Um, keep up to all that you've been doing on social media and you know, keep up with your personal life. Um, you can just follow up um, with what I do on um, Instagram, of course. Instagram is Instagram is the place. Is the place. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll come up with our own very soon. I know, right? <laughs> Instagram, um, Joe Praise the Emperor. Yeah. Um, on, on Twitter, at, at Joe Praise and Facebook, Minister Joe Praise, and the King's Chat as well, Joe Praise. Follow him, and he will make you fishers of men. It's I know, right I know. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.